You're listening to the Inside the Mix podcast with your host, Mark Matthews. Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Inside the Mix podcast. As always, if you are a new listener, make sure you hit that follow button on your podcast player of choice. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe and that notification bell so you get notified anytime a new episode drops, which is weekly on a Tuesday. I don't know what it's like where you are, but it's absolutely Baltic here in the UK. It is so cold at the moment of me, the point of me recording this podcast episode. So I've spent most of my time in the studio because I got it's a small room and I've got one radiator and it's lovely and warm. But when I go home, it's a property that's pre-1900. And uh, it's got central heating and double glazing and whatnot. Energy efficiency rating of C, actually. But my God, does it take a while to heat up. So it's given me an excuse to spend most of my time in the studio. Not that I need it. um, But yeah, absolutely cold at the moment. But hopefully, at the point of this episode going live, it will have uh, warmed up. So the first couple weeks of January, I've dedicated to improving the Synth Music Mastering website. And if you check it out, I'll put a link in the episode show notes. You'll see there is now a dedicated Inside the Mix podcast page. And also, importantly, new for 2024 is a free test master to new artists going through the Synth Music Mastering website. So at the point of this episode going live, if you would like to hear what your music would sound like with a professional mastering, head over to synthmusicmastering.com, if I can say it correctly, and take advantage of the free test master, folks. So in this episode, we're continuing this new episode format where you, the listener, submit a music production question. So your question will then be answered in the episode to this episode because I want you, the listener, to be involved in the episode creation process. Plus, you can give yourself a little shout out. So all you need to do is submit an audio message via SpeakPipe using the link in the episode description. Or if audio isn't your thing, Send me a DM on Instagram at Inside the Mix Podcast or email Inside the Mix Podcast at gmail.com. And remember to include a link to where our audience can find you online in your audio or your message. So, the question in this episode was submitted by Rogue Effects and Inside the Mix Podcast alumni. Been on the podcast a few times now and also submitted a previous question. So if you want to learn more about Rogue FX, check out Instagram, roguefx underscore retro wave. So his question is as follows. Just had a question that you may know the answer to. As I can't have a track in two groups in Cubasis, if I were to mirror the group and duplicate a lead vocal track in the new group with the same configuration apart from a higher or lower compression to the main group, would then run both vocals. Given the same effect as parallel compression, would you think so? One Vox strong compression and one light compression. So from that, what I can gather is if we were to duplicate the vocal track and then compress it and then blend it in with the original vocal track, would that create a form of parallel compression? So let's give it a go. But first, what is parallel compression? So essentially, imagine you've got two parallel lines, okay? Two identical lines, side by side, vertical. Now transpose that into your DAW. So we've got two identical tracks sitting side by side. And this technique, also known as New York compression, parallel compression, New York compression, sort of started in the 1970s. And the idea was you could use it to add punch to drums, for example. So basically, you are sending the output from one track to an auxiliary send, or you could duplicate the track, as I just described, and then you blend that in with the original. But the duplicated track, or the auxiliary send is the track that is going to have the compression on it. And remember, with compression, what we're trying to do is make the softer passages perceived to be louder. And at the same time, we are trimming those peaks, so to speak. That's more of a limiter, really. I mean, a compressor, when you put it to 10 to 1 or above, really does turn into a limiter anyway. But that, in essence, is what parallel compression is. And we're going to use it today on vocals. So how we can make a vocal just sound that bit bigger as well it can also be used for glue as well so if you've got a kick and a bass drum you can use it to glue those two elements together so you've got your drums and then and they're not just quite sitting right you want that kick and that bass to really hit hard you could send it out to an auxiliary send and use parallel compression i'm waffling now but that in essence is parallel compression okay folks so let's start with number one and in this one what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the vocal track 
and then we're going to compress it and then blend it in. So let's give it a go. So here we are in Logic Pro and we are in the session for my song Alive, which featured on my EP Lost and Found, which came out just before Christmas. Christmas just gone. And I have my lead vocal track here and I'm in the chorus section and I've duplicated this vocal track and I've option dragged the audio region down. So I've literally just got a duplicated track with the audio. No processing whatsoever, just top and tail of this these audio regions and on this parallel compression track I've got a compressor and an EQ and I'll go through the EQ in a minute if I open the compressor I'm using the Logic Pro compressor so I'm only using Logic Pro plugins here and I'm using the Studio FET because I like the transistor style compressor in this instance because I want it to be fast acting right so it's parallel compression so I'll go through the settings I have I've got the threshold set at minus 28 dB so this is giving me around minus 10 dB in gain reduction I've got a ratio of 4 to 1 pretty moderate medium style ratio the makeup gain is set to 8.5 dB so that's compensating for the gain reduction and then I've got my attack, at, well, it says 29 milliseconds. So that's timed to the BPM of the track. So it's quite fast. It's going to clamp down on any sort of quick, loud sections of this vocal. Not that there are many. And then I've got this release set at 240 milliseconds because I want it to not pump. I don't want audible pumping in this, in this uh, vocal. I want it to breathe with the track. I don't like using auto on the gain compensation or the release, to be honest, but you can do. And let's have a listen to it with the compressor bypassed and see what we have. And I'm going to play it with the compressor. I think overall much more controlled performance, but it is quite subtle. I just want to make it apparent as well why I've used makeup gain for the gain compensation. It's because that makeup gain will take effect before we hit the mix output. And then the output gain is going to control the overall output level, as it were, post mix knob. OK, so you could really push the makeup gain if you wanted to really, really push it. And then to stop it going into any nasty distortion, you could then adjust the output gain. But I'm not going to do that in this instance. So next, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to reduce the fader on the parallel compression track. I'm going to unsolo it and then I'm going to play the lead vocal track and gradually bring in the parallel compression and let's give it a go so that's at about minus 11.6 and i just want to say there are some artifacts in this recording my apologies like i said it's quite raw so i'm going to play it now with the parallel compression and then i'm going to take it away so you can hear the difference so hopefully you can hear the difference there. It's much more powerful with the parallel compression. And once again, that'll become more evident when you listen to quieter sections. But remember, when we're compressing, we're reducing dynamic range, so be wary. So another thing I have on this parallel compression track is an EQ, and I'm rolling off low end with a 6 uh, dB slope, a first order slope at about 100 hertz. And then I'm rolling off, uh, rolling off any of the top end at around 18 kilohertz, once again with a first order slope. And then I'm boosting around the presence frequency of the vocal by about 1.5 dB. And then I'm just adding a bit of air, air quotes, at 12 kilohertz with 1 dB as well. So I'm going to put that in now and then I'm going to play it without the parallel compression track with the compression in the EQ. And then I'm going to bring it in. So that's without. And then this is with. Just sounds a bit bigger, more presence. And in the context of the mix, it would definitely work. But there are a few downsides to this approach. One being this, you would have to duplicate a track for every track that you wanted to do this on. So you can imagine you have drums and you wanted to do parallel compression for a drum group. You'd have to duplicate each drum and then it would have individual processing. It'd increase processing power and it would just suck your CPU. I mean, you could bounce the audio in place and then copy it across from the original track but that gets quite cumbersome i think if you're doing it in one instance like this where it's just a single track in isolation then it's okay but as soon as the project gets bigger you want to use more parallel compression more processing power i think it can get quite cumbersome 
And that leads on nicely to our next one, which is going to be using auxiliary sends and doing the same thing. So let's give it a go. So here we go. What I've done here is I've created an auxiliary send and I've literally just copied across the exact same compressor. So I've option dragged the compressor across to this auxiliary send and the EQ as well, but I've bypassed the EQ. And on my lead vocal track here, I've got a send going out to this Vox parallel compressor and it's in pre-fade ascend. Now this is important because what that means is any level changes I make to this fader, it's not going to affect the settings in my compressor. Ultimately, it's not going to affect the gain reduction in my compressor. So I'll show what I mean. I've got the compressor on here and I'm going to play it and I'm going to reduce the fader on that lead vocal and it won't affect the gain reduction in this compressor. Okay, so I dragged that all the way down to zero and it didn't affect it. Now I'm going to put it into post fader. We could do post pan. I'm going to put it into post fader. I'll set it back to zero. I'll do the same again and you'll see what I mean and you'll hear what I mean. Okay, because it's post fader, any fader movements are then affecting the signal going to that auxiliary send and thus affecting the settings that I've made. So I've put it in pre fader and I do this when I'm doing any sort of auxiliary send processing like this, anything with dynamics. So let's do the same again. I'm going to turn on the EQ. I'm going to have the exact same settings as before. I'm going to set my original fader for my track to zero. I'm going to unsolo the parallel compression and I am going to drag it down and then gradually bring it in alongside parallel lines. Remember, folks, alongside my, alongside my original vocal. And there we go. Pretty much exactly the same as before, but this time we're using an auxiliary send. The benefits of doing it this way is that if you have more than one track, you can send it to this auxiliary send. For example, drums, I'm going with that idea again. So a classic one would be a kick and a snare. You send it to the same auxiliary send and you can glue the two together using parallel compression or a, or a whole vocal track, for example, or vocal group rather, not vocal track. Also, what you can do with this as well, and you can do this with the first option, is automate the fader level. So if you ever want to automate the fader level of an auxiliary send, what you need to do is right click in the label for that auxiliary send in the mixer window and click on create track. And what that would do is in the main timeline here, you'll see, and I'll describe it to you, I've now got a Vox PC, my parallel compression track in my main timeline window. And if I press A, I can now see the automation lane for it. So you can automate the level of the parallel compression using an auxiliary send. And you can also do it as well in the first option I showed you where you duplicate the track. So that's the second one. That's using an auxiliary send. And the next one is going to be using a plugin on the main track itself. Let's do it. So this one's really straightforward. All I'm going to do is option drag my compressor across to my main vocal track. And I'm going to leave the EQ where it is. I'm going to turn off that send because I don't need it. And here are the settings, same as before. But this time I'm going to control the amount using or amount of parallel compression using the mix dial knob in the plugin window. So I'm going to drag it down to zero and then press play. So that's at about 75%. So all I'm doing there is I've got the exact same settings and then I'm just controlling the amount of compression using that input output dial there. And in fact, then what I could do off the back of that, I could then boost that signal if I wanted to make it even louder at the, at the main output using the output gain. So I might actually turn that up to about 1.5 and let's see how that sounds. And then this is without. So there we go, really easy to do. You're literally using that mix dial there to blend in the wet and the dry signal. So much like we did before with the auxiliary send and the duplicated track, we've got our dry lead vocal and then we're blending in that wet compressed signal 
in parallel to it, parallel compression, New York compression, right? So really easy to do. And also, much like you can do with the other two options, you can automate that mix knob. So you might find that when you get to the chorus, for example, you just boost that parallel, that compressed sound, just to make it sound a bit stronger, a bit bigger. Uh, personally, my favorite out of the three is to have an auxiliary send and control parallel compression that way, rather than use a plugin and the mix knob or duplicate the track. So there we go, folks, three examples of how you can use parallel compression. So the first one, duplicate the track, but you will have to duplicate every track that you want, and you'll also have to at least double up on your processing because any processing you apply to the original, you'll then have to do to the second as well. That's not a hard and fast rule. You don't have to do that, but in essence, you are going to be increasing processing power. You then have the auxiliary send benefits of that, reducing processing power, and we can send more than one instrument to that auxiliary send, and we can perform a sort of glue, if you will. Then, and also remember, I did show you, and I found out in recording this episode, that you can automate auxiliary send levels, as in the actual fader level. Not the send from the track to the auxiliary channel, but the actual level of the auxiliary send itself. And then we have the third, which is to put the compressor actually on the track itself and use the mix knob to dial in how much of that compressor we want in our track. But remember, that then means we cannot send another instrument to that. I mean, you've got sidechain compression, but that's a totally different tutorial in itself. So three different types, pick your poison. Remember, this is an advice buffet. So pick the one that works for you and let me know your thoughts in the comments or shoot me a message at Inside the Mix Podcast on Instagram. So before I go, folks, a couple episodes of the podcast that might be interesting to you based on what we've been through today. Episode 105, Exploring Retro Wave Synth Pop and Vocal Production Techniques. And episode 81, Compression Basics Explained. And if you would like to be like my friend Rogafax and you have a burning music production or mixing question, please do submit an audio message via SpeakPipe using the link in the episode description. Or if audio isn't your thing, send me a DM on Instagram at Inside the Mix Podcast or email me inside the mix podcast at gmail.com. And remember to include a link to where our audience can find you. I cannot wait to have more of your questions on the podcast.